Okay. Hello everyone, and welcome to how to make your own RepRap build base. Now, I'm using the, this as a extra for the Bits From Bytes RepRap. Um, if you buy Bits From Bytes or have any Darwin, you'll probably somehow either build yourself or get yourself one of these. It's a bit of acrylic. I got 8mm acrylic with my RepRap Bits From Bytes originally, but nowadays you might get it a bit smaller. Now, Forrest recently found that the um, thicker you get this, the better to prevent warping. And the problem though is that A, sometimes it doesn't stick perfectly to this, and B, you get problems like this. If you look closely there, you'll notice that there's a big hole there. It's a bit of a crater. That was from the first time I turned my extruder on, plugged into my system. And so now there's a giant hole there. Fortunately, I did a little hard work and sort of thinking and flipped it over. So now this side's perfectly smooth, so I didn't completely destroy it. But that's why it's really, in my opinion, not a good idea to build directly on this. So you have to build yourself a build platform to put over this to protect it. Which is where this comes in. This is ABS. You're printing with ABS, on ABS, so the stick is very, very good. It's far better than double-sided tape, and all you have to do is put a bit of wood on, get it attached, get it bolted on, and there you go. We're going to just quickly show you how to do that. But firstly, here's one I prepared earlier, which has had at least 100 hours printed, a little bit of warping done. That's why we're building a new one right now. So, now for the actual construction. Okay, now your first step is to get yourself maybe a sheet. Now, sorry to be pouring your brand, but um, I got this pretty good. I got four sheets of this. It's essentially A4 sheet. It's roughly 30 centimeters by 20 centimeters, or 15. And it gives you a decent build size. If you're using this basic process to make a MakerBot, you've got more than enough. And if you're using a Darwin, then it gives you quite a lot of your space. You can't use all of it, but you, you win some, you lose some. And you can probably get a bigger sheet, but this is what I could find in the hobby shop. This cost me $15, and it's four sheets. Um, I got what's called 0.03 um, ABS. Um, that's in inches, and I, that's about point, that's about half a millimeter or one millimeter, I'd say. Really, you just need to make sure that it's solid enough to absorb a little bit of thermal take, and solid enough so that when the plastic pushes into it, it melts pretty well. Now, very simple, very simple. All you do is you align it up with some basic board you've got. Now, when you've got this, often it might have a little bit of a curve into it. The trick is to make sure that when it's curving up like this, Firstly, try and get it straight as you can. But if you have any curve in it, try and get the curve when it's straight up like that to be the side you put it on. The reason for this is because later on when you bolt it down, you'll be putting tension onto the board, which is a little bit better. Because if you have it like that, I put it over here, then you're bolting it down, all that will mean is that you've got a bubble in the middle of your build space. Now let's get working. Simply lay it on. It's an A4 sheet. Put it through, draw across. Then use a saw, use, an ed use anything you really need, a Dremel, and just cut that down. Now you cut one out. Again, this is the one you prepared earlier, but it'll just save us some cutting. Bit. Now the trick you do is simply get your piece on top there, put a little dab of glue right in the middle, and put it down. Try and get it aligned relatively right, so that it's perfectly on. Now, the trick is only put a little bit of glue in the center, not all over the place. You want the glue to hold it steady, but not actually take any tension right now. Then, what you do is you get this. My one had these holes cut into it, yours might not. And if it doesn't, then simply drill some holes in a spot where you think is reasonable. Not try to keep it out of your major build area, but just from the sides, and just big enough. Again, use these as a, use these as a rough guide to help you. So then, once you've got a few hills, drills hold, I mean holes drill, you get it, you lay this on the floor, you put the plastic on top of it, plastic staying in, in place, then you lay your build platform on top of it. Okay. Now you'll notice that every of these four holes lines up with the spot at the bottom here. All you need to do is simply get your sharpie or get your pen, drill, some holes. Well, draw some hole points. 
These are actually more guides than anything. More aimed at making sure that your drill holes get the exact right point. Get it. Take it off. That's done. And you now have four, have eight points that are precisely, I mean, the bits for right one here came with um, roughly four M4, I mean, M5 holes. So make sure you use an M5 drill or whatever size they changed it to. And there you go. Now, assuming originally you would have had this aligned roughly, you should have a piece that has the holes set up. We haven't glued it on yet because we're going to do this in multiple takes. Now, what you do is you simply align them up and this should be right. You originally did it like this, but actually one good idea is to push it off to the side because then you can get extra sol sol solid put down. So then, it should be solid. Now, before you do anything, get something that's, get something that's warm. I recommend a hairdryer or a heat gun if you have it and put a little bit of extra heat onto it before you glue it down. Just put a little heat over it for maybe 30 seconds or so, then put your glue on. The trick with this is it'll make sure that the, um, the plastic is nicely expanded so you won't get massive amounts of bubbling. That's what happens when you put it down and you don't preheat it. It's kind of like pre-tension pre concrete. If you don't, it, what'll happen is that the tension will heat up in the middle, it'll push out up to the sides, and eventually it'll pop up. And you'll then have an entire quarter that you can't print on. The, align the holes up. The trick with these is because they're all roughly evenly spaced, you can actually put it to the side and it'll still match up. Simply pop these wherever you feel like them. Roughly in the corners should be, should be good. Both the bottoms. Now the trick with these is you need to get them quite tight. By far the biggest problem that you're going to get is that it, it tends to pull up. Remember, any warping that you get, the, the board will attempt to pull itself up that way. Your job of the bolt is to prevent that from happening. Otherwise, warping will make the entire thing pull up. One issue that you're going to find often though is that for various reasons, sometimes expansion of the plastic, sometimes whatever, the, plastic, um, the whole board will pop up in the middle. So the sides will stay down, but the middle will pop up. This can even occur if your entire acrylic pad has, has, has started to warp as well, which can happen after you've been printing for six months or a year. Which is why I designed and invented this. It's not really invention, it's a very, very simple piece. If you look on Thingiverse, you'll find something called Clamp. Um, if not, search Let's Burn Zero Zero, which is my account on Thingiverse, and you'll find it. It's a very simple clamp. It's simply a triangle with slightly um, smoothed edge to make it look nicer. Simply put an M5 nut in there, and then you find out why we put it on the side. Simply slot it there, and you've now got a, a small piece from the edge sticking there. You could simply adjust these or make your own one. It's not very difficult to do. Simply get it there, put it on the side, and tighten it down. This is great because in the event that you start to get it pushing up on the, on the middle, you can now really push it down. Then get your Allen key, tighten it up, or if you've got no warping, loosen it up because you don't want the acrylic to crack. But otherwise, by simply having four there, having, a wood, having wood down, have as you maybe a sheet on top of it, putting putting a, um, a little clamp down which you can print yourself, you can now get a build base that is very, very fast and very easy to use. And on this old one that I used for about three months, if you come close, you'll notice, you might not be able to see that, but you can actually see lots and lots of very small lines that are appearing in it. That's because I've used this for over 50 prints so far, about two-thirds of the Artifactory's Mendel has been printed on this. If you come over here, you'll see how many pieces we printed on that one single sheet of ABS. All of this has been printed on that one piece. In fact, if it wasn't for the warping, which was caused by me not preheating it, we would be using that over and over again. This is far better than the old method that I was using, which is to use uh, double-sided tape, which works, but it tends to warp. With this, you can simply overbuild your rafts a little bit, and because they pop off, you have very little warping, and it's a much stronger build. Thanks, everyone.